Yeah, this is a pattern that I kind of stumbled across while uh, surfing the internet. I mean, it's a wonderful tool for finding patterns and whatnot. And there's a, um, a little uh, website, it's Golden, Golden Stone website, and they had this pattern on there, and they particularly said it was one of their favorite for the Bull River down in Calgary. Now, it's, uh, I don't tie it as heavy as they recommend to tie it, but uh, I just use a little bit of weight just to help it get down. And, uh, but it's, it kind of caught my eye, so that's why I decided to tie it. And I've tied it different, different ways. I've kind of uh, added my own little ideas to it and whatnot, and, and I went kind of crazy with it a little bit. But anyways, it's a pattern. I hope that you kind of enjoy it and maybe tie a, a few as well. So I'll pass around a fly box of a couple of them that I've tied and then you can have a look-see and then we'll get started on tying it. So basically what I've done is I've uh, tied these on a size 8 uh, streamer hook and it's the R73 which is equivalent to the 9671 and it's, uh, it's about the right size. I mean I tie them anywhere from a 6 and an 8 and I use the lead-free wire, I don't use the, the lead wire, and I only use it just to help enhance the shape of the body, and then uh, and I just use the one layer. So it's, it's not really meant for the, for the uh, weight of the fly. So with the, with the hook, that's what we start off with, in, with that one, and then for the tails I use the, uh, the gold biots, and uh, I find they they go hand in hand with the golden stone. And then uh, to, to make them splay out a little bit, you just put a little kind, tiny ball on the end. So for that, and so we'll get started on it. First thing I do is I don't start off with any thread, I just put the lead on there. And I've, I've got it now kind of uh, figured out for the size eight that I need about two inches of lead. So. I'm, I started out measuring with my ruler, as, as you can see, I brought my ruler along too, but, but uh, you can just use your two joints on your finger and just kind of measure it up. And I'm just about two inches right there, so I'll just hold it up. And I'm not too concerned about where I tie it on right now because there's no thread on there. This will <coughs> slide back and forth as I need it to go. So all I'm doing is just wrap it on and then I just bind it down. And now, as you can see, I can, I can move it back, I can move it forward if I want. And I want it positioned about roughly two eye lengths back from the front of the eye. And once I'm happy with where it's at, then I'll, I'll use my thread on there. Now, you can use black thread, olive thread, whatever color thread you want, but I've starting to get in the habit of just using a white thread and then just coloring it as I go. So I'll start at the eye, start building it up, and then working my way back. And then at this point here, I'll jump over it, just to, so I don't move it too much, because I, I don't want that uh, lead to move back too far. And then now I'll just build up a little dam behind it, so it doesn't slide anymore. And we'll get rid of that thread. And now we'll come to the front again. And at this stage, I want to bring the thread about halfway between the eye and where I had the weight. So it's roughly about one eye length. And the reason is for that is I want to put on the, uh, the little mono eyes that I made. Now these mono eyes, they, uh, they're fairly simple to make. And if you sit down uh, just one evening and you just cut a bunch of thread or a cup, bunch of mono up, and then uh, especially if you're watching a hockey game or a movie or whatever you're doing, you can make a bunch of these up. Just have a little tea candle going and just uh, once you use your tweezers, you get a, a spot where you actually have it. You just hold it there and then you hold it and just let it melt and then you get everything basically the same size at that point. But don't let it catch fire. You just want it to melt enough and then otherwise once it starts catching fire you might as well throw it away because it gets too brittle and it's black. Okay, so now 
At first I found these a little bit uh, tricky to tie on because as you can see with the big fingers and everything else, they're hard to hold because they're not very big. I mean, it's with the tweezers here, you can see just about how big they are. I mean, they're not, but now all I do is I just hold it by the end and I just kind of set it on the hook. One, two little loose wraps and I just let it go. And it's not going to go anywhere. So now what I'll do is I'll just kind of turn it and I'll adjust it as I need it. And if it doesn't want to do it, then now what you'll do is you pull your, your thread back, force it back, and then around on top. And then you can see it's still not sitting right. So I'll do it again, back on top, and then pull it back towards the front of the eye. And then even, even now it's still not sitting right. So all you do now is you just kind of move it, and then you can adjust it as you want it to make it look right. And the more you spin it around and you get finally to where you want it to be sitting, do a couple of figure eights on it, you check it, and then if you look at that there, you can kind of see that they're almost equal, a little bit, one might be a little bit, but you can still tweak it a little bit. And, and now to keep it from moving or sliding, you can just put a couple of wraps in the front of it and then go back over top, put a couple of wraps in behind it. And then uh, to, to, to keep it from sliding up and down this way, you go up and then you take and you just wrap a couple of rolls of thread around, just on the side of it, come around again, and do the same thing on this side here. And what that does, it kind of keeps the eye from sliding back and forth along the shaft of the hook. And this is the time where I like to color the eye because once you get all the material on there, you get the black marker and it, uh, the material that's near it kind of absorbs the, the marker. So that's all I do is I just take and I just dab it up a bit. And then if you do get any black on the thread, on the material, then the material that you put on there will cover it up. And, it, and it, I'm not worried about it bleeding through because the, um, the thin skin that I put on for the shell will cover it all. Do you find that black coming off at all? What's that? Does that black come off at all? No, it's, uh, once it dries on there, if I, if I was to touch it right now, it will come off. No, but, but once it dries... The water. Uh, not really, because the, uh, the Sharpie is kind of waterproof. You can always touch it with head cement afterwards too, and that'll help protect it a bit. Okay, so there's there's the eye tied on, and now what we'll do is we'll move back towards the bend of the hook, and the rule of thumb that I use here is is right where I mash the barb down, that's where I stop, and that's where I build up a little, uh, just a little ball to help splay the uh, fibers of the bayad out. You can use any color, but I got in the habit of using orange. Uh, it's just something I do, and a lot of my patterns now on the tail I tie with orange, and it's and you don't need much here. Like even even this much right here is too much, so I would take half of that, <coughs> and then I would just take and spin it on the thread, up, and then just two or three wraps of it, and that's all you want, just a little bump there, and what that's going to do is it's going to help display the goose blights for the tails. Some people can tie these into it both at the same time. Uh, I tried that, and it was a uh, Frustrating, so I just don't even bother anymore. I just do them one at a time. So I, I think I cut both of them just to get them ready. And I always just out of habit, I don't think it really matters any, but I always tie the side opposite me first, just so I can see um, the length of the tail in comparison with the rest of the body. And I like to put it just about three quarters of the gape of the, of the hook itself. So right now, if, if that's, you can see where the gape is there, 
you can you, you can hold it, but then once you put it up here, then you got no way of tying it. So I go by by how it looks and whatnot. And then once I'm happy with the proportion of where it's coming out, I'll take and I'll just pinch it up against it, and I'll just go real loose just to hold it, and then one more, and then I'll check it. And if I'm not happy with it, most times you can just take and pull it up, and it'll start to move on you. And looking at that, I'm, I'm happy with the way that particular one there is situated. So now you, you just take the next one, and because you've already got the length determined, you can just kind of hold it up. Guess where it's going to go? One second. Get my big fingers out of the way. And then you just pinch that with your thumb. And again, you just a couple of soft wraps just to hold it. And then here you can check and see. Like if you look at that, it looks, looks pretty close. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, if it's a little bit out, I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. Now at this point, I don't cut the bayettes off. I use that to help build up the thickness of the body, but what I'll do is I will pinch them together so that they're along the side, and then I'll just kind of hold it, and I'll just take the loose wraps up along the edge, and then that just helps build the thickness of the fly, the fly back up again. And then I'll bring it back, and I'll stop, again, about an eye length back, and if for some reason the bites start to turn on you, that's not a big deal. You can still take and you can still maneuver them by just by grabbing them and, and it works good that way. So I'll take a piece of copper wire. And this is just any wire. I mean, this just happens to be wire out of a chunk of wire because I happen to be an electrician. So that's, I get all the wire I want for nothing. And it, it's, uh, it does the trick for me. So all I'll do is I'll just catch this in on my side here and leave it right at the, the ball of where the, the bias are tied in. Now the, uh, the backing I use, it's what they call a thin skin. And this is the stuff here. I don't know if, you're, if you've seen this stuff around, but uh, it's, it's like a plastic and it's a very, and you can see here, this is, this is it here. It's kind of shiny on one end, just a paper backing. And once you cut it off, and get it off the paper backing, then it's, it's nice and pliable, and it's stretchable and whatnot. And I've got several cut, but this was the one I just cut here, just to show you this. Again, they say a rule of thumb is the same thickness as the gape of the hook, but I always go a little bit less because I find, on, especially on this particular hook here, it's just too thick and it doesn't kind of bind over, it doesn't want to roll over as much. So it um, seems to work better if you, if you keep it under the, um, not quite as wet uh, as the gape of the hook. And this one here is, that one's too, too wide anyways. Now what I'll do is I'll just cut a little taper in this one here so when I tie it on, it's just a point that I'm tying it in with. And I'll show you here once I get it tapered here a bit. You can see how it's, hopefully you can see that. You can see, just kind of taper to it a little edge. And they say for the shiny side to go up, so what I found is the natural curve of the, uh, the thin skin if I tie it on with the natural curve, when I fold it back over, then I get the shiny side up. And to have it so that it rolls right, I just put it so that it's not quite on the top, but more towards me. So as I start rolling it on top, it'll automatically take and pull it to the center so that it's on the top. And you can see that it, it just kind of moved onto the top there. And then I'll make sure that when I do tie it in, that I tie it back so that it's right at the, where the, the bias start to splay open. And to double check that, I will take and I will pull this back just to check it. And you can see that 
you can you can see the uh, where the dubbing ball was and plus where the biots are starting to spread. And now I will create a dubbed body. And I couldn't find the right color, so what I've done was I picked up two different colors. I picked up a, a yellow, uh, kind of a coarse dubbing material, and a, a goldish dubbing material. And they're fairly coarse, so they're, they're harder to dub on, but, but the way I'm going to dub it here, uh, creating a dub, dubbing loop, it helps bind the material together and doesn't uh, pull it off. So what I'll do is I'll I mix about half and half to get the, the proper color of what I thought was the right color for myself. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a pinch out, throw it aside, and then that's the, that's the nice advantage of, of uh, with the different colors of dubbings. I mean, you can take and you can mix and match and, and create your own colors. And with this stuff here, you just pull it apart a few times, like so, until you you blend the color that you want to go in there. And then I'll hold it up with the other two, and you can see the slight variation in the color. So with this here, like you can see that it's not quite the full yellow, and then it's not quite the the full gold color either get it out here so you can see it's kind of in between and it's, and it's I experimented a little bit with it I tried uh, um, more of one color than the other and I didn't like it so I just finally went half and half and that seemed to be the better color that suited me anyways so now what I'll do is I will take just very little of this stuff and just spin it in one direction only I'm not too worried about it being loose because I'm going to use a, uh, a tool here to help bind it together. And all I'm doing is just kind of putting it on for now. And as you can see, this material is so coarse it doesn't even want to stay on there that great. So what I use is a, a little spinning dubbing tool like so push it on here. This may not be enough either, but, and then I'll go up and around. Now I'll just take it over, once over, and what that does, it just kind of closes that so it doesn't go all over for you. And then all I do at this point here is I just take and I just twist it around there. Now what that's doing is taking that one thread over top and then twisting it, making kind of like a dubbing rope on there. And I'll just twist it until I get to the to what I think is the right amount of uh, tightness for it. If you want it a little coarser, a little more buggy or body, then you don't have to twist it as much. And I take it off of this because uh, I find it cumbersome. And then uh, I use, take advantage of the, the rotary vise here. And then I'll just start wrapping. I'll start right to the back if I can. And then I'll just start bringing it forward. And the, the whole idea here is you want to bring a, a tapered body to this fly. So I'll uh, go up to about the halfway point. Once I'm at the halfway point, I'll start going back again. And then once I get just about to the end, I'll start going forward again with it. And what, what that'll do is it'll give you that slight taper. And then that's, that's pretty good. I won't have to dub any more on it. If I find that I didn't put enough dubbing on it, then I would just take and uh, and put it a little tiny bit. I'll, I'll just show you just so that you can see. And then what I'll do is I'll hold this up on top. And out of a habit, and whether or not it's just me or I always go <coughs> three over top when I'm tying it off. A lot of people say, okay, that's good enough to cut the thread. But I guess it's because of doing the realistics and whatnot. I'll put two more wraps in the front and then one more and on top again. And to me, that just kind of locks it in. And then I'll cut them off. I don't try to break them off. I always just cut them off. Now, 
that to me is probably a good taper on there, but just in case you don't have enough on there, I'll just show you here as a, as a real quick. You just take and pull it out thin and then just twist it. And, and you don't want it too thick. And then all you do at this point here, you just take and wrap it around a couple of times. And as you can see, you can see how it comes off like that. Then you just pull it down a little bit and just twist it a little bit more. And then you just go back over top again. And I'm not too concerned about it uh, because it's going to be covered up and plus it's going to have the wire ribbing here to help kind of maintain it. Now I don't want the fuzzy body here so what I'll do is I'll give this fly a haircut and then I will uh, and then at the same time when I'm giving it a haircut I'll, I'll taper it towards the back as well. And you have to be kind of careful because the first time I did this I actually cut off the bayat. And I didn't stop with it. I mean, I just the fly only had one tail. That's all. I mean, it's okay. So this is so that's pretty good on the shape there right now. So what I'll do now is I'll pull this forward, and I'll just turn the vise so you can kind of see what it's going to look like here. So you can see you want it to come over the top. And then all I do, now you can hold it, you can go over this way here if you're comfortable with it, but what, what happens, it kind of lifts the edge up and curls. So I'll just hold it down, pinch it, and I'll put one or two wraps just loose, and then I'll have a look at it, and then I'll see that it's kind of holding and causing the, for the shell to come around about a halfway point, and it's not curling up on it. And then once I'm happy with it, then I'll just give it a couple more quick tugs on it. And then the, uh, the wire, I'll take one wrap in behind the, uh, the shell back right on top of the, uh, the dubbing ball that I made and just right next to the bias. And then I'll start, now I could use the rotary here, but I found it's just as easy to just take and start wrapping and making even wraps this way here for the ribbing. And if you, if you find that you can't do it, like can't tie it and space it properly, then turn the fly so that the top is facing you, and then you can actually see it, because that's the part you want to see. You don't really see the part underneath where the, uh, the dubbing is. You don't really see that. Where you really see it is on the shiny stuff here. So if, if for the spacing and whatnot, if you want to get the spacing, then you just hold it towards you, and the, you can adjust this, the uh, copper wire as you're going as well. And I like to try to get them even, but if they're not quite even, I don't think it's going to make or break the fishing effort for it. And then I put uh, just two quick wraps up where the thread is, and again, I do the same thing. I go three over top, two, and, and then I go one again. And for every pattern I tie, I don't know why I do it, but it's, if I do it differently now, it's not going to feel right. So it's, and then I just grab the, the little hackle pliers here and I just give it a twist here rather than cutting them. And it just breaks off. It never broke off right where I wanted it to, of course. So then I'll just take it again and twist it again and then it's broken off. And if you do decide to cut them with your scissors, cut them back at the heel. Keep your tips for your fine work. So it's, okay, so there's, there's the ribbing on there. Now you can see the ribbing, it's fairly straightforward and, and it's still buggy looking on the bottom, but it's still, it's not too bad. It's turned out not too bad so far. And at this point, what I'll do is I will uh, take in, because I want to fill the, the little bit of a space here. As you can see, the, uh, the cover of this is a little bit big from what the eyes are. So I will take, I'll bring it up right to where the eyes are, and I'll pull it tight. And what that'll do, it'll force that material down in between the eyes and let the eyes stand out. And 
that's not. And if you find that your eyes are still going crooked, then you can just force on the thread to, to get them back to where they're supposed to be. And now what I'll do is I'll just take and cut this piece off. I could keep it on and fold it back over, but I don't want it to get too bulky, so I'll just cut it off. <laughs> 